Hey, pumpkin. Hi, honey. Oh, you're so cute. Looking good up there, pumpkin. I know, nothing's changed since the last video. It's because I haven't even edited that video yet. It's like five minutes, if even, since I stopped recording that one. And things were just looking so cute in here with all the pets. I figured I should turn on the camera and this would be a good intro because you get to see almost all the animals. Toby's, he's downstairs, having himself a nap on the sectional. Isn't this carpet disgusting? It broke like every rule of doing YouTube videos. You're not supposed to point out the flaws because then it becomes a free license for people to for people to criticize the flaws. You hear that? This thing has a very loud fan on it. Pardon the loud fan. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just chilling. Is it Christmas Eve when you're watching this? That's not for me. This video comes out December 24th. If you celebrate, then happy cri Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And if that's not your thing, that's cool. Just hope life is going great for everybody. I've got a lot to get done outside. Going to be doing a lot with protecting palm trees. Figured I should film that because that's something people get pretty interested in. I've never actually seen her get up there yet. This is a new love seat, so I was curious as to how she got up and down. So you do that, don't you dare claw it up. That's what's going on. I'm gonna get the needle palms and sable palms and those things wrapped up nice and tight with some lights, produce some heat, it's supposed to be down to minus four degrees Thursday night or Friday night, I don't know. It's Tuesday, so gonna get this stuff done on Wednesday, Thursday, the snow that they're making a very big deal out of. We're not getting that much. They're saying one to four inches. I don't, I, that's not usually a big deal. So I don't know why everybody's making such a huge deal of it. Other than the timing. I get it, it's bad timing for travel, but they're acting like the whole city's gonna shut. It sh I think it'll be fine. I could be completely wrong though, who knows? We'll come back tomorrow and start wrapping up some plants and I'll start moving in the ones that can't handle all that cold. Do you like this? Look at that, isn't it beautiful? It's just classy. So much class. You jealous? You jealous of all the class? I don't mind it. I like it. It's calming. Relaxing. Oceany. The cord? Nah. Won't be able to see the cord when I'm done with this. Actually, I don't think that's even staying there. That's something from my childhood that I just didn't want to get rid of, so there it is. No, not a fan of this person. Him. Good. The person who's interviewing? Not my favorite. I enjoy listening to podcasts, though, where people have varying opinions and just kind of let people talk without arguing. It's just a disclaimer. I wouldn't want anybody thinking that I'm a fan of that other guy. Nope. All right, we'll cut back tomorrow. Get outside. Get some stuff done. Good morning, pumpkin. Just heard the beep. Didn't run away. Very good. You're getting so brave. Such a brave pumpkin. I shouldn't say that. She's not afraid of the camera. It's I'm pretty sure it's just a coincidence that when I turn on, she happens to run away. And that's just because Punkin, she never really stops moving. She's not one of those cats that lays around and sleeps a whole lot, so don't catch her taking naps all that often. I like this one. She's always on the move. Remember those hexagon panels I showed you all that were in the box in Wednesday's video? Yeah, it was Wednesday's video. I said I didn't know how I felt about them. I like them. I put them up last night. Very colorful and fun, but the 3M tape, it didn't, it did, they just... It was all up here, looks great, and then just, just weird. 3M stuff is usually pretty strong. Is the next day, don't remember if I said that or not, it has been an extremely, extremely busy morning. Just about, had three different service people here all at the same time. They weren't supposed to be here all at the same time, it just happened that way while I was trying to get the video released. It was a lot of chaos. Hey, Cosmo, you say hi? Yeah, hi, pre oh, you don't want to say hi, okay, I'll leave you alone. And of course, had to start prepping for the cold. That was the whole point of this, well, the whole point of this video is to have a Saturday vlog. I'm thinking I may end up, hmm, should we talk about this now? I don't know. That, that, what is that? I don't, I don't like that hand motion. This area over here, so when I was working out here in the growth space on the shelves last week and really throughout the last few months when I've been out here doing stuff, I had talked about how I decided to really Come on, this crone, it will look totally fine one day and then I get up in the morning and it's just like, hey, I'm dying. That's how we know it's time to repot a plant. Difficult to keep it hydrated. It's going to be fine. It has to wait to get watered. I have this space right here cleared out for the cold hardy plants. The plants that I leave outside for the bulk of the winter time, which y'all be seeing here in just a minute. Mule palms, the windmill palms, and then all the little things like the fatsias, the restrata yucca, recurvifolias, pindo palm, those will all be in this space. And I, on camera, it might look like a decent sized space, but it really isn't. Cause I have to take into account that the garage door goes to about right here. So that means that I have from where my hand is to the areca palm to squeeze in those two big mule palms that 
that could be an issue. Uh, I'm kind of in the mode right now of like, let's just get it done and make it work. In prior years, those plants, the windmill palms and mule palms specifically, all went over here in this corner by the small garage door and uh, they've just gotten too big for that spot. I, d I didn't like it over there for them. It was a good spot temperature wise because that corner tended to be more drafty, but there's the new window over there now and I have some new uh, what weather stripping stuff on the bottom of the door. So I don't think it's going to be as drafty. There are plants that can handle the draft. That's, that was my point with having them over there. Anyways, I think this is going to work better for them when they're inside. They don't need as much light because they're only usually in here briefly. I would say out of the entirety of when the plants are inside, that's going to be, well, this year, October 15th through probably early May. It's not usually October 15th. It's usually into November, but you know, had a crappy fall. Typically those palms are in here for like maybe a month total. When temperatures drop below 15, I move them in. The windmill palms could take colder, but they're in pots and they're slow growers, especially in pots. So I just rather bring them in just to be safe. Why wouldn't you, right? Save on to as much foliage as we can. I'm talking about all this right now instead of when I'm outside with the plants because it's pretty cold. I don't really feel like standing around talking outside with them all that much. And once they're in here, I'm not going to have a lot of room to move around them and talk, I don't think. But that's, that's the update. That's where those plants are going to go. Oh, I just did so much talking and wasn't recording. You need to stay focused. That's part of the challenge when you're multitasking and trying to get stuff done is to stay on top of your game. You need to reel it in a little bit. What I need to focus on now, before I move the plants inside, are the plants that have to stay outside. So I have the sable miners here, scrub palms, dwarf palmettos, whatever you want to call them. Sable miners, the proper name for those. These are good to zero degrees, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. They will start to show signs of burn on the tips of the foliage, usually between five and 10 degrees. There are lots of different variations, I'm not going to call them varieties, but variations or forms, different locales that they can be found. They call those seed forms where they tend to be more cold hardy. These are just sable miners, don't know their origin, don't know their parentage. They just, just little dwarf palmettos. Going off of that, I say zero to five degrees is where we'll start to see that leaf burn, possible defoliation. They don't grow super fast. Whatever variety this is, isn't the slowest of the growers. Some of them grow like snails, some grow fairly quickly. But because of that, the slower growth, these and the windmill palms, like I was mentioning when we, when we were in there in the garage, I like to go ahead, if it's going to be below zero to five degrees, then I want to make sure that they're wrapped with something. If it's going to drop below zero, again, Fahrenheit, then I like to go in with the bulbs, just C9 bulbs. I prefer C7s. They don't put out quite as much heat, but I have trouble finding those for sale usually. So just C9s. I have a whole bunch that I've gathered from being on clearance after the holidays every year. They put out a good amount of heat. Sometimes it can be too much heat and it can burn the leaves. So that's something to keep in mind. That's another reason I don't really use them unless it's going to be below zero. Just to add in that extra protection. Other thing I've done here, viburnums, the Prague viburnums, Pragans viburnums. I've brought them over here, laid them down. These are the ones that I hadn't planted yet because I grew really attached to how they looked in their containers for winter interest. I know it's not what I got them for, but it just looked so nice. I didn't want to plant the rest of what I had. I have those laying down. I'm going to do frost cloths. In here i'm thinking across this entire spot i at times have just done it individually around the clumps of the sable miners so some here and then some more frost cloth over here but with those colds that they're predicting it's not as much the cold it's the wind that's something that I have to account for right they're calling for wind gusts maybe even sustained winds between 40 miles an hour and well, i don't remember what is between they said 40 miles an hour in excess that's where the concern comes in for me because okay it can provide heat to the plant but if it's really windy it's just blowing that heat right off the plant which also dries the plant out even more anti-transpirants come in handy those need to be put on the plants typically when it's over 50 degrees something like wilt proof or freeze proof and wilt stop those are good ones it's just it's an extra coating spray it on there let it run across the leaves it provides like a waxy coating to the foliage and helps prevent water loss from blowing out of the plants there's an airplane i'm gonna take a break here for a moment <laughs> the second i hit record another plane shows up i'm gonna get these lights plugged in at least i should have done that before i set them up okay that's a relief the lights work should have yeah plug those in before setting them up to make sure they work the planes 
getting off topic here for just a moment. I don't, if you saw the last video and how loud that airplane was, it did not seem that loud in person, but it came through my microphone horribly, ridiculously loud. And I hadn't taken into account that there's no leaves on the trees. So the sound's probably just carrying and echoing around a lot more than I'm used to. So that's that. These all have a good layer of mulch up around the bases when we are out of uh, temperature range that I need to be concerned about protecting the crown. Center spear right here, crown is all that fun stuff down there in the middle. It's where the rot tends to accumulate. Once the temperatures are looking better, which is just gonna be a couple days, I am gonna pull the mulch back. I don't like to have it piled inside there for too terribly long. As long as temperatures are gonna be staying above like 10 degrees, then I want it out of there. It can get too hot in the middle and start having some issues. There's kind of a better example of how I piled it up. There is some stuff collected in the middle, but it's mostly on the outside. I'd say there's probably about eight inches of mulch in this entire area. The area in the middle with the Pharaoh's mask has at least a foot. And then back even further where the gingers are, probably about a foot also, so it sort of tapers. If you really, really, really wanna, oh my gosh, seriously, other plane? But why? Stop it. Air traffic is really intense today. If these were trunked palms or a more sensitive type of palm, something that I would consider doing would be to uh, take frost cloth, and I like to soak it in an anti-transpirant in a bucket just until it's all absorbed. Lay that out to dry so that I have a material that's insulative and also repels water and then I will stuff that into the crown, making sure that it's positions that water will run away from everything. Helps keep moisture out of the plant, and even beforehand, I should have said, before even wrapping the crown with a frost cloth. You don't have to soak an anti-transparent, it just helps to wick moisture away. Or not wick it, but you know, let it slide away. It'd be a good idea to take little shreds of the synthetic quilt batting frost cloth, whatever you're using, and stuff it into the nooks and crannies and crevices wrap the plant and that way when you have that water repellent material stuffed inside those corners it helps pull the water away so it can't settle down into the areas where rot can occur okay is there anything else i could go on and on and on and on and on about different ways to protect palms heat cables are really popular they don't usually cut it here for when we have the kind of cold that we have it, you have to use a lot of them and it also it says on the packaging very specifically how you're supposed to use them which makes me think that there's probably even a liability of me suggesting to use them if somebody were to use them then burn their house down so maybe don't do that the christmas the, it doesn't say anywhere on the box <laughs> not to wrap the lights around the plants because that's what they're for so albeit honestly probably a bigger fire hazard based off of my knowledge of nothing between the two. It's just those bulbs get hot. If they're on dry material for a long time, I could see that being a problem. The heat cables should be more of a gentle heat. That's a, it's neither here nor there. Do your research. Find out what works best for you. Now y'all know what I'm doing. Maybe. I did. I just talked about a lot of stuff. Mulch is up. Lights around the plants. Going to do frost claws. I'm thinking that I should also wrap the little gem because that's a zone seven and we're going to be having some zone six temps here. These right here should be pretty protected, but maybe I'll put a frost cloth over them as well. I don't know. Need to make sure I don't forget about that needle palm right there. I have two more sable miners there. I have to make sure those get wrapped up. They already have their lights on them though, so that's good. And lots of mulch over here around the big ones. I have a couple strands of lights that are going to go over those and I usually put two uh, frost blankets around those they just they've gotten so big and so beautiful that i really don't want anything bad to happen to them the needle palms they grow like snails they are one of the slowest growing palms you can have they're well, at least of the cold hardy ones so it's important to preserve as much foliage as possible so i'm going to handle that all that stuff get the two mule palms this one and then the other one that y'all just saw over there i'm gonna get that moved inside a couple windmill palms I haven't made up my mind yet about these. I want to see the snowfall. If there's going to be good enough snow, then these should be protected. It's just, I don't know. It feels like a waste of time trying to protect these when they're in containers. Very, very, I, you can't tell because you're not here. Those containers, they're 30 inches across and extremely, extreme, or no, 28 inches across and extremely heavy. I'm not moving those. I feel like I'd just risk breaking them if I did that. I'd rather put a new plant in there if they die than risk breaking those pots. I don't want anything bad to happen to them. Should probably move these so that they aren't exposed, even though they're good to zone four, just to be safe. Probably going to move those. And then all the little guys over here, they'll go in last. So big plants are going in and then I'll pile the little stuff around them. I'm not gonna film the process any further. It's just the temperatures are dropping. I really don't think I should have the camera out here for too terribly long just to be safe. So there it is, that, that's what's going on. Eh, I just felt the camera, it's not that cold. Frost blankets couple more things of lights. That's all we need. Sure why I said we. It's definitely 
just me out here have three blankets over this pile. That should be more than enough. This frost cloth material is a little more thin, so I like to layer it up. Even though this is really probably unnecessary for this corner, but just why not? I have the materials. May as well do it. I'm out here anyways. So here's a bag. Frost protection bag. This one's eight foot diameter. Should be enough to go over that magnolia. The thing's definitely not eight feet in diameter, but I don't know what the length is. You would think if it's eight feet in diameter, then it should have a good amount of length to it. Yeah, that looks actually no. Oh, I hate these. I hate when they call these a bag. It's a disc. Hardly a bag. The bags actually have seams in them, so they go over things like properly like a bag would. This is just, it's just a disc. Sure, it works as a bag because you can get it over the plants, have the drawstring where it's accessible, and then tuck everything up around the bottom and pull that in. So yeah, kind of, as long as the drawstring actually works. Drawstrings tend to be kind of junky and not last super long. So it's one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of those. That's as far as that's gonna pull. I've been working on it. I'm not making much progress here. Sometimes if you just do it more slowly from one side and then from the other, either way, it's hard to get these to come around the bottom and have a tight seal so that they won't blow away. I think it's a lot easier just to use a regular frost cloth than to use these ones that are not actually bags with seams sewn into them. It's because it takes a long time to get it pulled in tight enough so you don't have to worry about it blowing away. It's something else I forgot to mention. Don't forget to weigh these things down. Got mulch in the corners, pottery, shrubbery, whatever it takes, especially if it's gonna be windy, get some stuff on there. Don't want those blowing away in the middle of the night or during the day or at any time, you, you get the point. Okay, and this is it. This is where I wrap it up outside. You can kind of see an evolution of what I do here. Got the mulch, not too much in the crown, but it is piled in there just because it's supposed to get so cold. Have the lights down in there, not touching the foliage, at least not many of them touching the foliage, especially the crown. It's also important because it can burn them and that alone on itself can cause damage. Larger plants wrapped up. These are needle palms, so I will not be stuffing anything down to their crowns because ouch, it would be painful. And then this, this is a proper bag. It actually has seams on it. See how it domes up around the plant? So it's much easier to get over the plant. Get in, pull it over, and just tuck it in. If it has a drawstring, pull the drawstring so it'll get nice and tight up around the base of the plant. This one's old, so there's no drawstring. I double bag these, so there's gonna be another bag on top of this one, and then, well, just any bags on top of that one. Haven't gotten to it yet, and that's it. And if there's gonna be a lot of snow, putting a stake in the middle, not a bad idea, because it'll help get the snow to slope away. That'll help keep it from doming down and piling on top of the frost cloth. There it is. Feels good to have, well, it's not done, but the part where I need to talk to y'all about it's done, so that's nice. <laughs> I can just get back to doing stuff. Not that I don't absolutely enjoy every moment of it, but you know what I mean. It's cold, it's nice to just get things moving. So what was that? Two needle palms, this one, and that's it. I can move the plants inside. We'll cut back when the plants are inside. Yep, yep, they fit, barely, but they fit. Was a little bit of a challenge getting this one moved in because right where the garage door motor is that was catching but I was able to just kind of twist it around and swoop it into place so everything's good now for the cold front got both the mule palms in here it's the big windmill palm in the back little one in the front I always try and move the plants in in a way so that whatever's the most cold hardy is in the front and whatever's the most tropical is towards the back or I guess the, towards the house towards inside of the house that way when it's time to move the plants back out I can do it by temperature so when it looks like it's going to be back into the 30s and even 20s most of what's in the front right here right in this little pile that can come back out and then when i'm more confident with the temperature staying steady the mule palms can come back out as well so basically just try to not block anything and it can't be moved back out because i really prefer to just have as many of the plants outside as possible because they're happier that way and there's not a ton of light on the side there's also somewhat more of a cold draft towards the front, even though there's a new weather strip down, can still feel that cold air move through. So I prefer for the plants that can handle that cold draft, be right in the front. And as long as they're getting that cold draft, I don't worry about the light with them anywhere near as much because they're not really growing and moving. They're just chilling, hanging out. A little bit of cold's not going to hurt them. The lack of light, eh, it's fine. Do this every year. It just happens on the other side. And usually for no more than about two to three weeks. It's rare that these particular plants right here, the windmills, yuccas, there's even some akubas down here, fatsia, pindu, butia, Mediterranean fan palm, European, whatever you want to call it. Rare that those are in here for more than two weeks at a time during the winter, but 
I, it's as of today it's only been winter for a day and it's minus five degrees outside right now it's the next day plants have been covered nestled had a blizzard they were very dramatic about it on the news it, yeah it was windy the cold certainly seemed to be concerned about the snow like maybe an inch to an inch and a half i don't know i was out this morning got my hair cut ran some errands roads were iffy but they weren't bad it's been way worse but it's all about the cold it it got really freaking cold last night i think it got down to negative six six below zero fahrenheit which they said was a record since like 1983 and i don't know about that any of y'all in st louis message blokes i could have sworn we had some colder temperatures like within the last 10 years but maybe i'm thinking of wind chills i don't know either way it sucks outside this is the worst cold I've ever felt in my life. I don't know how people do this who, where this is just normal for them. What, what, why? How? How do you do this? Feels nice in here. The heater managed to keep, which is still running. Part of the noise, but it's too cold outside to turn that off. Had the heater running full blast and it has maintained, maintained a range, I should say, of about 65 to 70, somewhere in there. So that's pretty good. That's with it running on high. It's a 10,000 watt and that's, that's the best it's going to be. And I'd say that that's been a pretty good test for it. So it dried the air out an awful lot having it run that much on high, but I think the humidity in here is still around like 45%. Not ideal, but it'll do. It's fine for right now. Since it's not warm, it doesn't need to be that humid. I've talked about the VPD before. That's how I keep track of what I do and don't need to worry about with temperature and humidity. It's going to be 65 and 45% humidity is just fine for the plants. I feel good. Got all that stuff done outside. I feel good when I have the plants moved in in a spot for them over here where I know that they're safe and I know that everything outside is mulched and taken care of. I'll pull those blankets off of everything. Uh, like I said, when the forecast is showing that it's gonna warm up and stay warmed up, which should be in a couple days, this temperature thing that's happening right now, not normal. I know it got a lot colder other places, so hopefully everybody's okay. No burst pipes or broken roofs, anything like that roofs roofs so hopefully everybody's roof is okay i take y'all outside and show you the plants that i covered up but you saw me cover them up and it is it just it feels so horrible out there i'm not going out there if i don't have to it's too freaking cold one i'm pretty sure it would break the camera i don't think the sensor could handle that kind of a transition i tried filming something with my phone last night so here's that negative three degrees outside right now but look i thought i should show y'all there's look at all the snow on my balls isn't it beautiful that's worth it. And for some reason, when there's snow on the ground, it doesn't actually feel that cold. Don't worry, I'm not letting the dog stay out for long. In fact, this is it. I gave him an opportunity to go to the bathroom. I'm telling him, you need to go potty, like right now. Minus three degrees, what are you doing? And also, I just got out of the shower, so I'm kind of wet and wearing shorts and sandals. Like I said, though, surprisingly, not that bad. Why don't you come inside now? If you're not gonna go potty, we gotta go inside. Come on, come on. Did it come out okay? It's not like something of importance but the thing is when i was filming it the picture on the camera or on the phone screen wasn't actually moving it was frozen like literally and figuratively but it still recorded yes yeah, so i'm not even going to try and record out there with my phone the plants look good out there from what i can tell the sensor that was inside the needle palm did i tell you all i threw a sensor in there i don't remember the last few days are a bore between then and getting ready for the holidays uh, the coldest temperature I think that the sensor read or that I saw when I checked on it was negative six or no, 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 six, maybe five degrees Fahrenheit, which is fine for the needle palms. They'll be good. Really, if it's a brief cold, they probably would have been totally fine with negative six also, but it really needed to be brief. And it was the wind that was the main concern with this storm, the blizzard was the winds, those drying winds that just blows the heat right away from the plants. So even if you wrap them and you have the lights on them and the wire, if there isn't something heavy duty around it, really like a plastic even, unless you're doing a full on blanket around the trunks of the plants, that wind's just blowing the heat right away for them. So heat cables and things like that don't really matter if there's no insulation to hold the heat inside. That was something i probably should have talked about before did i talk about it before if so good for me anyways i'm done it's been a very busy few days and i'm uh, looking forward to relaxing for several days with the family gonna hang out do the holiday stuff and maybe get some plant stuff done out here next week i don't really know i don't, also i don't know if i'm gonna have a video for next week or not might be taking the week off it just depends on what's going on with the fam while they're in town we haven't all been together in several years actually on christmas so 
looking forward to that and want to make sure that that's a priority. But if I have some time to kill and feel like doing some stuff out here, then I'll pick up the camera, bring you all along. If not, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and maybe Happy New Year. I would like to think I will have uploaded by then, but I don't know. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.